One of the exciting new features in Machine 1.5 is drag and drop of MIDI. Essentially what this is, is it allows you to take any of Machine's own internal patterns and then drag and drop them directly into your host sequencer. This is accomplished by selecting the pattern you would like, and then by clicking on the little crosshair right here, and then dragging and dropping it directly onto the track in your host. Now I've just dropped this onto a MIDI track inside Pro Tools, and I could now take this MIDI track and point it directly back at Machine. So if I wanted to use the MIDI track to play some of Machine's own internal parts, I could do that. What I've done here instead is actually pointed it at an instrument in contact. You could point it to any other instrument you like, and that's what I've done here. So here's our song, and if I solo this track, it's now playing just the contact instrument. Within Machine, you also have drag and drop of audio. Now, this is a good complement to drag and drop of MIDI. The procedure is the same. You'll first want to go into the dropdown and change your pattern drag mode, however, to audio this time. As with MIDI, it will drag and drop the selected pattern into your DAW. After clicking on the crosshair, I'll now just drag and drop this onto an audio track inside Pro Tools. And there's my audio file. Another useful feature in Machine 1.5 is Export MIDI. What this allows you to do is to select any machine pattern and export it as an offline MIDI file that you could then import into your host sequencer, for example. In order to do this, you'll need to do a little setup. The first thing you'll want to do is go to Sound MIDI Batch Setup. And in most cases, you'll want to choose Sound to MIDI Notes. What this will do is it will make sure that each individual sound inside Machine gets its own MIDI note in your MIDI file. After that, it's simply a matter of choosing Export MIDI. I can give my MIDI file a name, and it will save down. I've just chosen the desktop in this instance. Another useful feature in Machine 1.5 to assist you with studio integration is the Collate Audio feature. Essentially what this does is it allows you to take all of the files inside your machine project and save them all in a folder of your choosing. This is really useful for sharing projects between other people because you'll be sure that all the files you need for the project will be contained directly inside the machine project folder. You do this by going into the file menu and choosing Collate Audio. You can see here now I've been given a dialog where I can choose the folder that the project will be saved into, as well as the option to delete unused files, which will remove any files from the machine project folder that aren't actually used by the project. Another useful feature in Machine 1.5 is the addition of macro controls. You'll notice that in both the machine hardware and software, a new page has been created at the end of the group page list. This page contains eight different macro knobs. Now what the macro controls are useful for is assigning any parameter in that particular group to that particular knob. So I could assign a macro control to control, uh, for example, filter cutoff uh, or any of the sound parameters in that particular group. And then I would have access to all of those different parameters conveniently available on one page. First what you'll want to do is choose the thing that you want to control. In this case I'll control the filter cutoff on this group. So I'll just right click on the destination and I get the option assign macro control. Let's assign that to macro knob number one. Now I'll go to the snare drum sound in this particular kit. On the snare drum, let's assign a macro control to the tuning knob. I'll assign that to macro two. And then also a control to the reverse parameter of the snare drum. Now from the macro knob page directly inside machine, I can now control the snare drum in real time. like so. Now an added benefit of this arrangement is that all of these macro knobs can also receive a MIDI assignment. If I want to automate this using MIDI, I could do so. This is really useful if you have an external control surface such as a keyboard or a fader box, something of that nature. Also, each of these individual macro controls will show up inside the automation list inside your sequencer. Another highly useful feature in Machine 1.5 is the ability to record your pad input, your playing, directly as a MIDI track inside your DAW. 
In order to do that, you'll first want to go into this dropdown and choose Sound MIDI Batch Setup. In most cases, you'll want to select this option, Sounds to MIDI Notes. And what that will do is that will ensure that each sound in machine will show up as its own MIDI note on the track inside your DAW. That's what I want, so I'll just hit Apply. And now, you'll also want to make sure uh, in your sequencer that you are able to both receive MIDI from machine as well as send it back to machine. Now this will vary from sequencer to sequencer, so you'll want to con consult the documentation that came with your own sequencer. After you've done that, it's simply a matter of arming the track that you'd like to record onto, and then I'll just play a part in. And you can see that the part has now been recorded directly into the DAW, and now I can play it back. <laughs> 